paint otherwise you're not going to be able to get everything done so I'll just mix this again so here you've got uh, yellow ochre mixed with white down here and there you've got paint gray mixed with white then you're going to have yellow ochre mixed with paint gray in the middle so I'll do another mix where did we put that palette now? any 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 water box. Oh, thanks. okay so I'm taking my yellow ochre, mixing it with my paint spray. So now I've got a medium. So it's hot, medium, cold. Now I take, you need to mix enough, otherwise you're going to run out of paint. People often make the mistake of mixing too little paint. Don't be scared of mixing too little paint. You're not going to waste your paint. So now I'm going to do it in between and I'm going to do it in between here. So you can see the, now the interesting thing and later on when we go into color, you'll, this is made up of yellow, red and blue and this is made up out of yellow, red and blue. It's crazy when you think about it. Eh? Okay, so now we've got hot cold but now we've got hot warm medium cool cold and we've got dark light so so you are all the way down here you're going to do the same mix you're going to have five times five it's going to be 25 now 25 variations of colors that you can use so right at the bottom you're going to also have your lightest uh, uh, warm mixed with your lightest cool okay so now we start now the first this is this is standard for any for any painting that you're going to start you're going to need your cloth especially with this technique so have your cloth ready have your newspaper ready because you're going to use it and we start the sort of in between medium color here and i'm just going to draw the outline so i'm just using a normal angle brush and I'm just drawing the outlines and remember it's always a good idea instead of drawing an organic line you draw like a straight line it's always better so here I can see there's my shadow now here we've got what we call a infinity curve so I've got a curve going up like that which is much nicer now the next step, this will already be dry, is I'm going to take a bigger brush. Remember, big brush, big area, small brush, small area. And I'm going to just give it a very a medium in the middle here, mid-tone. So I'm going to go over the whole thing, mid-tone. Very um, watery, and the paper will absorb it very quickly. And it is important to do this because even if you work on a canvas, so this is not against cold and we've got dark against light so we've got hot cold hot cold hot cold and we've got light dark light dark light dark so as long as you know it's like that it's easy to see so you can see here we've got coolish but there's hints of warmth at the top so everything is not one color so that cool is different to that cool that hot is different to that hot that hot is different to this this is more like a almost like a coolishness here can you see there where this is more warm but this is not as warm as that okay so now i'm going to start washing in where i see hot and cold so i start washing by using my main colors here so i'm going to start with my cold it's just a thin layer so i'm where do i see cool there's cool there's some cool here. There's cool in the shadow. Yes, very, very thin. We're not painting yet. We're just washing in 
to help me later identify where it's hot and cold. There's some cool sitting here. There's definitely cool in the background here. And I always include my negative space. Very important to include your negative space. Your negative space makes your positive space happen. So I'm not painting yet. I'm just putting in dark and light and hot and cold. Now I'm going to add hot. So now where I see it's hot, I add more hot. So I'm not worried about the color. I just want to show myself this is hot. And this is hot. I'm not worried about if it's dark or light at this point. I'm just wanting to put in hot and cold. Now there's another reason for this is the fact that this the water we're working with acrylic saturates the paper because so that when we start putting in the next layers when we actually start painting then there's enough saturation of water that we can actually do the technique on the paper otherwise you have to repeat the technique three or four times before you even get a result okay so i'm going to stop it here now use this one for me as an example because you've got cold hot because now we're gonna we worked the previous one we worked dark and light now we're gonna add dark plus light cold plus hot okay I'm just gonna separate a little bit so I'm gonna start off just mixing a string light both sides but now the interesting thing about this is now that we've also got in between colors so in between this and that we also have so we've got strings running down and we've got strings running vertically so I've got this mixed with that and this mixed with this So that's going to go all the way down. So let's say over here, I've got this one, picking this one. So here it's going from medium to warmer. So this is hot, medium, cold, dark, medium, light. So now I want to start painting. Okay, so you can add your slow drying medium. So we're going to use glycerine. We're just going to add a dot of glycerine to the center of the palette. And you can just pick up a dot as you go. And the glycerine will actually um, help the paint. It will slow down, the dot, slow down the drying time of the paint. But you still will use water as well. So you use your glycerine and your water. So if I look at it here, here's my glycerine. So if I want to mix the glycerine, I just t t touch a little bit and mix it in there. Can you see it makes it all sticky? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now I want to make a fast or a slow blend. So the first one, let's make a fast one. I take my color, I put down my paint, I wipe my brush, I put down my paint, I wipe my brush, I blend. Okay, so this is not going to blend as nicely because it's paper and paper absorbs quickly. 
So you can see here what happens as you get the blend quickly changing into the other color. That's a fast blend. A slow blend is color, wipe, color, don't wipe, blend. And you'll get that you'll see the blend is a much slower transition from the one color to the next. Like here is a quick transition, there's a slow transition. So this is paint, wipe, paint, wipe, blend. Paint, wipe, paint, don't wipe, blend. Okay, got it. So now what what you do with this, the, this this technique is is called blending. Blending is the same as hatching. And we've done the previous one we did was blending in one direction. Now we're gonna blend in more than one direction. So we did a cross blending drawing and now we're going to do a, of a cross hatching drawing. Now we're going to do a cross blending painting, which means we're going to paint in different directions. So you start your painting exactly the same way. You first give yourself a little bit of an outline. Just, I'm just using the edge of this brush, which gives me a nice Sharp line. Okay, we're working on paper. So paper unfortunately absorbs the paint very quickly. Almost dries out the paint. So what we need to do is we need to put a few washes in just to help the paper absorb the paint. So what I'm gonna do now is now I need to look at is it hot or is it cold? So I need to ask my myself two questions. Question number one is it dark or is it light? Question number two, is it hot or is it cold? <coughs> So if I look here, I'm seeing in this section of the sample there, this is definitely dark. Now, how do I know when it's hot and how do I know when it's cold? Because it doesn't matter what the color of the object is. Now, can you see that there is a little bit of a bluey tinge to it? Mm -hmm. Can you see there in this section here on the yeah. actual item? So that would be cool. So it would be dark, cool. And you see here, it's almost got a slight yellowy tinge to it here. Mm -hmm. That would be warm. So the moment it's got a blue, it doesn't matter what the color is, it will have a slight bluey tinge to it. That would be the cool. It doesn't matter what the color is, it can be blue, but it will have a slight warmth to it, like a slight yellowiness to it, or even a slight reddishness to it, then it will be warm. Is the cool color usually closer to the shadows? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. In this case it is. In this case it is. So if I look here, there it's cool and then there it's definitely cool, but look there it's cool. So now if we look at this, we've got hot. So very hot, hot, medium, cool, very cold. Very dark, medium, medium light, very light. So now I'm going to just wash in where I see. The cool, so it's just a wash, very thin, very watery. It doesn't matter which direction it goes, just very thin. And do your shadow, remember your background is part of your whole painting, yeah? so your shadow also, in this whole section here, it's, it's cool going to warm, but I'm going to just wash in my cool for now, that's definitely warm, can you see the paper's got a yellowy tinge there, yeah. okay, so that's going to be warm. So I'm going to paint over all of this, so it doesn't matter if it's a bit liney or a bit yucky. 
it doesn't matter. Remember, there's no such a thing as perfection in, in art you want. If it's imperfect, that's actually what makes it look alive. Can you see here, it's warm there. Can you see there? Okay. So now you already got your contrasts going. Now one of the tricks of painting is that you always have dark against light and you always have hot against cold. So if this is hot there, it logically they must be cool in there. Now if I look there, there is cool in there. Can you see there? Mm -hmm. There is definitely cool in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now I'm going to start blending. So you always, when you look, say to yourself, if it's hot, they must be cold. If this is hot, they must be cool here, yeah? because it's hot, there's a cool edge here, and then it's hot again. So it's hot, cold, hot. Okay, so let's say I start somewhere here. So that is warm, but it's not hot, hot. It's warm going towards a little bit media. And it's not very dark, it's sort of medium darkish, so it's sort of sitting here somewhere. Now it's very important that you paint the foreground and the background together. If you only paint the one, you're going to have, this is going to look either too light or too dark. So the moment you put in the background, the background's going to tell you whether it's too light or too dark. Okay. So I start off, now what I'm doing is, um, this brush is actually very nice because it's an angle brush, you can almost make nice little rounded shapes with it. So I can paint in any direction. I don't have to only paint in one direction. Plus I can use the brush like this and like this for small areas, you know that. So I bring this in here. So it's not a it's not a movement like this. That's what a lot of people make. It's a small movement. Like, it's a small movement like this. In different directions. Okay. And that's where the blending becomes tricky. So now here, yeah, right in here, while it's wet. So that's why you need to work in a small area of time. While it's wet, you, ch put, you start changing the color. So there's definitely a coolness in there. So I put my paint down where I see it. And I get rid of the, my paint, extra paint, and now I blend. So now I'm blending. And it, you'll probably have to blend a few times to get the effect that you want because because of the paper absorbing. Yeah, I can see that's even warmer, hotter, hotter, and that's even cooler, darker. Than so I'm going to add a little bit. So I always test my color. You should actually have a newspaper underneath here. Test your color before you put it down. So here, a little bit of a darkness sitting here. Now I'm blending. So I just put a dab of a little tiny bit of water on there because there is already glycerine. So now I'm blending. Now I want to make this a little bit hotter. My <laughs> I don't know. I gave this one to the Australian speaker at Francis Scott. So this thing must be done. And <laughs> so it must be done. So now I've got cool, hot, cool. And this is much lighter, yeah, warmer. So it's a lighter, warmer. Slight hint of cool in it, but very little. It's more towards the warm side. So the moment I put that down, it starts pulling this out. Can you see? Now remember, you can work on both sides of the brush. And it's always better to have less paint. So always blend. Now I can compare this against this. Now I can say, oh, okay, I actually need to go darker this. Because I need this to tell me what to do. Can you see? Okay. Enjoy. Let me